Caffeine by Michael Pollan. Before I say anything about this audiobook, I just want to say, and I haven't done this before in an intro, this around me. All of this is supposed to be my future board, okay? What do you guys think of the background in these videos? What would you rather see? If there had to be anything you could change, what would you change? I'm sorry if I seem cranky. I just woke up like 15 minutes ago. I've also been thinking at some point in like my videos that like maybe halfway through like relocating to the couch on my left. I might do that in the middle of this one. Let me know in the comments below. I might not because sugar, I, you know, I didn't clean the couch and there's cat hair all over it. But let me know in the comments below. I'm incredibly curious. And also please hit that like button. It helps so much with the YouTube algorithm. Caffeine is invisible. And what do I mean by that? I mean that some 90% of us use it daily. It's so pervasive that ingesting it daily, we sometimes forget, puts us in a state that is altered, and it's almost hard to remember that this is a psychoactive drug. We give this drug to children regularly. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel, and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal, because I don't want to do it alone, and come on guys, who doesn't want to make self-growth normal? Then. Again, make sure to smash that like button. It helps so much with the algorithm, and I really appreciate it because a lot of work really goes into making these videos. I hope you guys have had your morning dose of caffeine. I've only had a third of mine. The other two thirds I will take in about an hour when I get to work. And as far as this audiobook, given what my channel kind of represents, I would have liked the most to get out of this book something about how to get more out of caffeine or something like that. But that's not what I found. I figured because it's about how the drug shaped the modern world, maybe we could find out how it could shape our future world. I mean, he did spend a lot of it talking about like the science of like with then the withdrawal of effects of addiction, headache, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, decreased motivation, irritability, intense stress, loss of confidence and dysphoria. These are the symptoms, ladies and gentlemen, of watching the news 24 seven. I'm just kidding. I mean, they might be. <laughs> but these are the symptoms of withdrawal. In the beginning of the audiobook, Michael Pollan suggests, he urges the listener to just, 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 just try quitting, just to see what it's like, as he did while writing this. I, like, I, I stopped drinking coffee in 2020. Earlier, I did, I, I quit for six months straight. I relapsed last month. I only drank a couple cups and then stopped immediately. And it was extremely effective and easy when I quit. I, I, ta I think I talked about it in my review of The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Something else I was curious about is, what are the author's feelings about caffeine. I find that extensively researched topics, controversial ones specifically, there's always some bias. And what is that bias? Also, how can you be controversial about caffeine? <laughs> it's just caffeine. You drink it and you go to work. <laughs> so I was really with this book, you know, until I heard two questions that made my head turn. Have we been duped by caffeinated plants not only to do their bidding, but to act against our interest in the process? Who's getting the best of our relationship with our income producing plants? There are toxic ramifications. Again, my early morning scatting. R -r 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 ramifications. Ramifications about just the wording he uses in these questions. What does he mean by do their bidding? And what is our interest? Is he treating caffeine addiction like some sort of power game between humans and nature? I thought humans were nature. <laughs> Getting the best of our relationship, not to mention caffeine was discovered on accident and apparently before we got addicted to it, bees got addicted to it. Is it really that dangerous? It's not alcohol. <laughs> in fact, according to the author, its popularity really took off when it began to replace alcohol in different areas of Europe. From there, the audiobook, uh, it just became a roller coaster because I would nod my head and then shake it and then nod it again. Any stranger watching me would have thought that I'm going through caffeine withdrawal, which is, okay, it wasn't that bad, but, but still. I love how he explains the history of coffee. It reminded me of how Ariana Huffington explains the history of sleep in Sleep Revolution. Definitely one of my favorite parts of that book. It's very thorough. Like he was sure not to leave anything important out, and yet the book is only the audiobook is only two hours long. My favorite part in the history lesson of this audiobook was about the London coffee craze of the 17th century. The coffee houses. They just sound they just sounded compelling. People of different races and sexes and stuff, they got along there. <laughs> if you started an argument, you had to buy a round for everyone. We haven't reached that level yet, have we? That's not like that's not like that in 2020, is it? Coffee houses has provided an entirely new environment for social, political, commercial, and intellectual exchange. It dramatically drove the Age of Enlightenment and, of course, the Industrial Revolution. So for me, the best thing about the book was definitely the history lesson. But as he says in a section about the consequences of caffeine addiction, the 
energy that cup of coffee has given to you has been borrowed from the future and must eventually be paid back. What's more, there is interest to be paid on that loan and it can be calculated with the quantity and quality of your sleep. I agree, but I question to what degree, like does he support caffeine usage or not? Maybe he's just trying to offer some perspective with his interviewing Matthew Walker, the sleep expert the author. He's known very well for uh, his book, Why We Sleep, which I haven't reviewed yet. Consider all we've done on this plant's behalf. Allotted it over 27 million acres of habitat, assigned 25 million humans to carefully tend it and bid it up its price until it became one of the most precious crops on earth. This astounding success is owing to one of the cleverest evolutionary strategies ever chanced upon by a plant. The trick of a psychoactive compound that happens to fire the mind of one especially clever primate, inspiring that animal to heroic feats of industriousness, many of which ultimately redound to the benefit of the plant itself. Acres of land, that's one thing, and being tended to, but like how does caffeine benefit from a higher price? <laughs> it just sounds to me like he's painting coffee in this, this color of like evil, cunning, or trickery, and I don't get it. Is he truly in, insinuating that coffee has like a degree of control over us? Because I agree, but there's something about this that just says, well, it's a bunch of, it's a drug, and we're a bunch of addicts, and it's not fair, and we're getting less of the, and we're getting less out of the relationship. What relationship? I'm sorry, Michael, but this is a plant we're talking about, okay? Mind you, one that is not bad for the environment around it. His wording at points seems quite subjective. Were that many feats of industrious really that much more beneficial to the plant than us? Throughout the book with what he says about the, the compound's history with our species, it doesn't sound like we got the short end of the stick. In fact, it sounded like a tool that we used to do more and create more out of ourselves and our surroundings. Like Tony Robbins said, it's not about the resources, it's about the resourcefulness. I don't know if that's what he meant, but hopefully you get what I mean, quotes. All right guys, I always read standout quotes in my reviews from each book, but I've reviewed almost 200 books on this channel so far, and I'm sorry to say this, but this is the first time I have had no standout quotes to share. Direction one. I recommend this audiobook for I guess anyone who wants to learn more about the history of caffeine, this audiobook is the place to be for that. I mean, I'm sure a coffee house is, but this is what you sink your teeth into. I mean, I'm sure a cup would probably be better to sink your teeth into of coffee, but if you did that, I'm sure you'd probably burn your gums and pour and spill coffee all over the place. But I'd also recommend the audiobook to anyone who thinks they might be drinking a little too much coffee or taking too many caffeine pills and just wants to understand more of the consequences of doing so and what to maybe do about it. And yes, people take caffeine pills, I actually do. And with good reasoning too. I didn't plan to explain this in the review, but I, it, it's definitely a, chi a, choi a life choice that I made that I, am, I consider worth sharing with my audience. At Dunkin', next to the dealership I work at, a medium pumpkin spice coffee is $2.12. I would get it hot because according to my coworker, I'm cheap as hell, and I agree. <laughs> I didn't want to spend the extra 67 cents on iced, call me crazy, but I like just drinking the whole coffee at once so I can take it all in and just jump at my work plan. Again, call me crazy, and it takes way, way, way too long for it to cool down enough for me to do that. By the time I actually get to work after drinking the coffee, it will have been 30 to 40 minutes after I park at the lot. But if you want to look at it that way, it honestly takes way, way too long to even walk to Duncan, wait in line, order a coffee, pay for the coffee, wait for the order, get the order, and then walk back to the showroom, and again, wait for it to cool down just so I can drink it. I've sent more than one appointment before in less than 40 minutes. Waiting for coffee to cool down is not in my job description, so I consider that like probably sort of stealing money from the organization. I know I probably sound like such a Dwight Schrute right now, but like if I could just save like 99% of that time for work's sake at an exponentially cheaper price than $2.12, let alone $2.79, that would be fantastic. So I thought back to when I lived in Westchester, Pennsylvania, and I was taking those caffeine pills I got from Amazon. I'll put a link from, to them in the description. So all I had to do was well, it's just a pill. <laughs> but it's not just caffeine, it's also L-theanine, which is an amino acid found in different teas that combats, it, it, it calms you down a little and it combats the jitteriness. So it's like this smooth, easy come down. They're like 32 cents a pill, I think. It's roughly one cup of coffee's worth. Not to mention that L-theanine 
And again, it's just a pill. It's literally like a thousand times better than what I was doing before. So I take one in the morning on work days when I wake up to do these reviews and two when I get to the dealer and then I'm good. I also take Adderall. I don't know, I'll talk to my psychiatrist about that the next time I see her. I've done similar things in the past and she's been okay with it. Direction two. Whether you like this audiobook or not, if you or someone you know is struggling with breaking bad habits and trying to adopt good ones, I think Atomic Habits by James Clear says a lot about how to effectively handle something like a caffeine addiction. But something more achievement oriented, less scientific, a little bit more straightforward would definitely be The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Like I mentioned, both great books, so similar yet so different from each other. Caffeine by Michael Pollan. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video if you want to check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if you check out this book and you liked it. But hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already because I don't get why people watch this far into my reviews and they don't subscribe. But if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to get a notification whenever I drop new videos, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.